know what you're thinking. Black is two pawns up, so easy win, right? Mm, not that simple. A master would see straight away that these bishops are opposite colored bishop, which means this bishop will never be able to help this poor pawn go forward. Or this one. Now you're thinking this king can help his pawn go to promotion, right? But then, why Kramnik and Kasparov agreed on a draw after this move? If you try to bring your king, I go on d4. The king attacks the bishop. I move it, but I make sure I stay on this diagonal so I control these two squares so the pawns can never be pushed. Now this king is thinking, since this pawn is stuck, I'm gonna go there so I can push this pawn instead. But now all you have to do is come back with your king as well. King h3, king f2, and both the bishop and the king controls this important square so black is totally stuck. I know this pawn is scary, so the first two moves that came to your mind are either to go there or come closer with your king. But you can't win with white if you play like this. Let me show you. Knight here, king g4. You want to bring your king, but now I push already. And if you try to come closer, I push. And your knight is lost, because if you move it, I queen. If you don't, I capture it, and I go after your pawn. But this pawn endgame is just a draw. We want to win with white. The best move to win is to go in a totally opposite direction to what you were thinking about. Remember this winning plan. One, your knight becomes like a national guard for this square of promotion. Second step, now this king is free to go after this pawn. Check this out. When black starts pushing, we come back right on time to control the square of promotion. And all this king has to do now is go grab this pawn and win the pawn endgame. believe everything you read in chess books. This rook versus two pass pawns is a good example. A supposedly good book endgame says white cannot win, but they can. One, the king shouldering technique. This king now blocks the enemy king. The rook takes this opportunity to check and grab one of our pawns. The second principle, moving downstairs. Let me show you. Start pushing your pawn, check, and careful. Don't play a move like king c7, because black's idea is to pin your pawn and take it to obtain a draw. So when they check our king, we start moving downstairs instead. Black is forced to keep checking us or we get a queen. But again, here, remember to never go on this file because your friend has another trick, which is to retreat the rook. And whenever you queen, boom, they take our queen. Move downstairs again. Rook check, king c3. And when they play this check, things are different now. You can put your king on this file because the rook doesn't have this trick to grab our queen anymore. And on the next move, we promote to a queen and win the game. It's painful to draw a game with a queen up, but you don't have to if you know this trick. If it was black to play, it would be a draw because it's a stalemate, which happens when the king and the pawn cannot move, but the king is not in check. Here, it's white to play. And if the queen stays on this file, black has no move, so it's a draw. And if the queen starts giving checks to get closer to the king this way, it's still a draw because whenever white tries to bring their king closer, you promote to a queen. I said white had a trick with this beautiful king move, and now suddenly the the king is allowed to go on this file. The king continues its mission. Discovery check. King here. And now remember this. Whenever your king enters in this square, black is lost. Start with queen here, controlling the promotion. The king protects its pawn. Queen check. King here. You want to keep checking, right? Not here. King g4. We let black promote to a queen. And after king g3, the magic trick is that black has no check. Zero. Our next move is queen checkmate, whatever black does. Don't resign too early in your games. This grandmaster playing with white thought it was impossible to stop these pawns from queening, but he was wrong to give up so early. Rule number one. The only way to try and stop these pawns is to create checkmate threats. So king here, threatening checkmate, king here, rook check, king here, check again, and king a6. Threaten him with checkmate again. And when he goes to a5, you follow him. He goes to a4, you go to c4. He goes to a3, you go to c3. And king a2. And now we have a Problem. Playing this move doesn't create a checkmate threat. Principle number two, when you are not able to create checkmate threats and this king is on the same rank as the most advanced pawn, the only way to stop them is by threatening to take one of the pawn with check, giving you time to grab the next pawn. And the best move here is rook f1. If he pushes, check, and white wins the game this time. If he pushes this pawn instead, the king now has time to come back. Then all you have to do is sacrifice the rook for a well-deserved draw.
Are you in trouble with black? Rule number one. If your pawns are doubled, play with your front pawn and only use this one as reserve tempo if it's necessary. The problem you have here is that the pawns are already on the sixth rank. If you push this pawn, the king goes to g8. And now the only two moves that allow you to keep this pawn are king g6 or pushing this pawn. But both these moves lead to stalemate. You got it? If it's white to play and these two pawns are too advanced, this position is just a draw. The only way for white to win this endgame is if it's black to play. Because after king g8, we push, king here only move, and now don't make the mistake to play king f7 or stalemate again. Remember rule number two. The way to win is to sacrifice one of the pawn to gain the king opposition in return. We sacrifice, he takes, and king g6 opposition. King h8, king here, king h7, check, king here, check, and we win the game.